one of us again for the presence of the Almighty God. We thank God again for all He has done and for what He's still going to do. Brethren, this message this morning is just a reminder of what we all know about before because there is no new message in this mountain. The message we are hearing every day in this mountain is, is, is like a repetition. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. And the title of the message is Sin Brings Death. Sin brings death. Brethren, it's unfortunate that many believers are yet to realize this, that sin brings death. Sometimes we believers, we still gamble with sin. We still doubt. We, 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 we swim into sin. We swim out. We don't know the consequences of all this. The Bible is telling you and I, this very hour, sin brings death. Brethren, if you take a look at the Christian of today, if you take a look at what is happening, even when you try to tell a fellow brother or a sister that the life that you are living as a believer is not right, he will tell you, don't judge me. The Bible says, thou shalt not judge. Or are you really judging the person? No. You are only telling him, as a child of God, you don't need to be a fornicator. As a child of God, you don't need to be an adulterer. As a child of God, you don't need to be a liar. It's a sin. The Bible says, oh, no righteousness is a sin. No matter how you, the, the lie was told, or no matter how you defend it, lie is lie, sin is sin. And the Bible makes us to understand that what is the consequences, consequences, that, consequences that go with sin, the consequences that go with it is death. If we all know this, we will take a new turn. And I pray, as many of us, that the Lord is speaking to this morning, we all will take a U-turn from sin and run back to Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brethren, what is sin? According to the dictionary explanation in the religious context, it says sin is the act of violating God's will. Sin can also be viewed as anything that violates the, the ideal relationship between an individual and God. Can't you see? Or as any diversion from the perceived idea, idea order for human living. So sin has been defined as to miss the mark. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Brethren, I want us to turn our Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. We all know it very well. It's a popular scripture that rings all the time in this mountain. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. It says, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat from it of it. Of the tree of knowledge of it say, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. Thou shall surely die. Can't you see? And what happened? Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. So, brethren, what are we talking about this morning? I don't know the decision that you are about to take now. I don't know how you are about to compromise your faith now. The Lord of God is telling you this morning, if you remain as a second wife to that man, you will die. When you fall into that sin of adultery, you will die. People don't understand. People think that it's the day that you drop down and die, that is the day you die. The day you commit sin, that is the day you die. Adam and Eve, they committed sin, they did not drop down and die, but they died spiritually. Each time you commit sin, you are the devil. The Bible makes us understand in the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. He said, he that commits sin is of the devil. I want you to turn your Bible to the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 3. I read, I read from... Verse 8, praise Master Jesus. Amen. Amen. First John chapter 3, verse 8, I read. He said, He that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose that the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Do you want the coming of the, the death of Jesus Christ to be vain? Each time we commit sin, we are saying that the death that Jesus Christ died on, on the cross of Calvary is in vain. Look at verse 9. So whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin. For he for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. 
praise Master Jesus. Yeah. Brethren, what are we talking about? The Bible is telling you and I this very hour that sin brings death. If we all know that sin brings death, what do we need to do? We have to flee. The Bible makes us understand we should flee from every appearances of, the, of evil. No wonder Joseph knew the consequences. He did not, he did, Joseph did not play around it at all. Joseph did not, did not like, did not even preach quote the Bible to, to, to Potiphar's wife. What did he do? He flee. He not at that particular time, he go, he was in danger. And if he do not flee, this woman can rape him. And what happened? Joseph had to flee. So brethren, what do we need to do? The Bible is telling you and I this morning that we should flee from every appearances of evil. Let's take a simple analogy. When you see an acid in a bottle, did you play around it? Did you say, let me see it or test it with my tongue? No. See, it's like an acid. It will burn you. It will destroy you. It will reduce you to a piece of bread. That is why you have to flee from every appearances of evil. Flee. Because sin brings death. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. You read John chapter 8, verse 24. He said, I said, therefore, I said, therefore, I'm reading John 8, 24. He said, I said, therefore, unto you, that ye shall die in your sin. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sin. What is the Bible telling us here? This was talking about the Jews. They contend with Jesus Christ. They did not believe all that he was saying. Even all what the prophet has written about him, how he will suffer, how he will be bruised, how he will die for the sin he knew nothing about in order to redeem humanity. But they did not believe, and he made them to understand. If you therefore not believe what I'm telling you, you shall die in your sin. For if you believe not that I am he that have come to redeem the world, I am the one that have come to purge you of the sins that your forefather committed. You will die in your sin. I pray, as many of us that is here in the world this morning, we will not die in sin in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Turn your Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 3 to 7. Genesis chapter 3, verse 3 to 7. I read. It said, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it. Least you die. Can't you see? He told them that is why the Bible is, 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 is a compass for our living. Do you want to have a purposeful living on this on your sojourner on earth? Grab the, the Bible, read the word of God. The Bible has every answer to everything in life that you ever need. Everything you need in life is wrapped in the word of God. This is the food for your spirit. This is the food for your soul. Just like the way you take your balanced diet so that you will not be uh, malnourished, so that you will not you 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 will not you will not, you you will you will not be sick uh, in, in, in your body. That is how the word of God is. But if you take a look at many people today, they are sick. A spirit man is suffering from a spiritual kwashoko. Why they are they are getting fat and fat in their flesh, but their spirit man is dying. Their spirit man is is begging, is begging them for revival, but they have failed to realize it. Why? Because they are carried away by their flesh. I pray that none of us will be carried away by our flesh in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father has never kept us in darkness. Look at what he told them. He said, but of the fruit, when Satan came to tempt the man and woman, tempt the woman, I mean, he said, but of the fruit, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For God doeth know that in the day you eat thereof, then shall your eyes be open, and you shall be as good, you shall be as God's, knowing good and evil. But you see now, we now know good and evil. Are we able to stay away from the evil? Evil is now more contagious than good. Evil is now more infectious than good. Can't you see? It would have been better for them not to have eaten it at all than for them to be struggling between good and evil. In other words, when God created man, there was, man was perfect. Man was pure. Man does not think evil. Evil does not rule in the heart of a man. In other words, immediately man ate from that thing. We brought Satan into it. We gave Satan a portion of our heart. 
Et que ta hier ni sa te pour les dans Jericho. Alléluia. 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 Amen. Amen. So what are we talking about, my beloved brethren? The Bible makes you and I to understand here yeah, when Satan came to tempt ten, ten Eve in the Garden of Eden, Eve should have quote that scripture to him. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, he said, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he would have quoted to Satan. He said, Thou shalt not eat of it. Satan, I cannot eat for I cannot disobey my father. He has told me not to eat. He said, The day I eat, I will die. And I don't want to die. Satan, depart from me. This is when me where the children of God are failing today. They don't know how to use the word of God to address the situation that they are going to. Even when the Satan is coming, is manifesting in their thoughts, is manifesting in their mind, is manifesting in their thinking. They don't know how to rebuke him and say, Satan, get behind me. They want Satan to appear. Say, I'm Satan. I'm the one I want to tempt you. They believe Satan will appear physically. No. He comes in a different way, in a subtle way, in your heart. In other words, there is no sin a man commits without premeditation in the heart. Before you commit any sin, it's after thought. Everything is after thought, whether you like it or not. If you want to lie, it's after thought. If you want to commit adultery, it's after thought. So, in other words, what do you need to do? You need to address it with the word of God, right from the heart. That is why the word of God is telling you and I this very hour that sin brings death. And what do you need to do? Address that situation with the word of God and flee from every appearances of evil. Joseph knows the consequences of it and he flee. He did not waste time at all. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doeth know that in the day you eat thereof, then shall your eyes be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the, the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her. And her husband with her and did eat, and the eyes of them both were open. Can't you see? Their eyes were really open. The eyes of, of, of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they saw a fig tree together and made themselves apron. This is where the calamity started. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to know this scripture very well. It said, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, the tree, the tree got lost. But he lost it after the, that tree. He saw it. He, 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 he remembered what God told, he, told her. That shall not eat from that tree. He made Satan to know. But he, he said when he saw that the tree was good, just like the way the Lord is telling you now, that man that you are about to hook now with is not the right partner. Ah, the man is handsome. The man is ah, He has money. He can take care of a woman very well. He has everything that I need. Ah, he, he can. He, he is able to satisfy me. But the Lord is telling you, it's not your life partner. This man will turn you to a punchy bar. This man is an adulterer. This man will not give you, you will not, you, you will not have peace in that marriage. But he said, no, it is good. He has, a, he, he has a, a, enticed you with wet. That is what happened to Eve here. I want us to turn our Bible to the book of James. Turn your Bible to the book of James. James chapter 1 verse 12. James chapter 1 verse 12 I read. He said, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Verse 13 says, Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. James 1 14. He said, But every man is tempted when he's drawn away from his own loss and enticed. Can't you see? Before you commit that sin, you have you, 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 that's, you, you have been enticed. That sin, you, you have seen it so good. That sin has been so painted that yes. You are already looking at what you are going to benefit from it. So in other words, the word of God means nothing to you anymore. You are about to sleep with that woman now. Or you are about to sleep with that man now. That man that had HIV. You don't know. You look the man so handsome. You don't know that he's an HIV carrier. You look the woman very pretty. You don't know that that woman is an HIV carrier. Or is even carrying a deadlier disease that is even worse than HIV. But because you look that the woman is so handsome, you are already think, you are already meditating on the pleasure that you are going to get from her, but you don't know that you are fishing from a troubled water. 
brethren, that is what happened to Eve. This is what the Bible is telling us here in the book of James. He said, but every man, he said, but every man is tempted. James 1 14. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away from his own laws and enticed. Verse 15. He said, then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. Can't you see? Adam, Adam lusted after that tree. And he, he said he saw the tree was good for food. And he ate it. And when she ate it, and when she ate it, what happened? He brought death upon herself. He brought death not only upon herself, upon his entire generation. He brought death into mankind. When I was watching at that, uh, watching at the people who died in that district, they were trying to they gathered and they were trying to uh, 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 more for them. I, there, there was a, this is a firework that exploded. You see the way people were running. They were, you see, you see adults running. This is the, what are they running for? They are running for death. Death. That is to tell you the smell of death. They were running for death. Adults, both big and small, they were lying on the floor. They lie on the floor. This is death for you. What are, this is the death we are talking about. He says sin brings death. And that is the, that is the terror that is upon humanity today. But we thank God for Jesus Christ. He has never kept us in the dark. He has made us to understand that there is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Brethren, can't you see? Jesus Christ is the only one that has died and resurrected. Nobody has ever tried it. Some people tried it, but they were struck. They were struck by thunder. It's only Jesus that defeated death. He defeated death. And the Bible makes us to understand that death is the last enemy. That will be destroyed. In other words, Jesus has given us victory over death by, by his death on the cross of Calvary. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. So, brethren, what are we talking about? The Bible is telling you and I that that sin that you are about to fall in now is as a result of the lust of your heart that is drawing you into it. The Bible makes us understand the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 10. He said, My son, my son. My daughter, if sinner enticed thee, consent that none. Consent that none. He knows the consequences that goes with it. That is why he's telling you and I this hour. If sinner enticed thee, consent that none. Because you know what? If they entice you and you fall into that sin, what happens? He brings death into your life. He brings death into your lineage. He brings death into the life of your children. Most of us today, we are we are still addressing the wrong foundation of our forefathers. Most of our forefathers, they use human behavior to, 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 to build their house. They use human behavior, they use human behavior for rituals as if they, they, are, they are killing goats. And those people that they were killing, they issue cause upon them. And they issue cause. Most of them, they, they carry pregnant women, they open their, 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 their womb alive and remove the baby and use it for rituals. These are some of the iniquity our forefathers committed, and most of us are battling with it today. We are praying, doing dry fasting for it. Why? Because of the sins of our forefather. That is why the Lord is telling you this hour, sin brings death. Adam brought it, but thank God for Jesus Christ, the quickly spirit that came to redeem humanity. But, have we, have, but humanity has failed to realize that, what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. They have trampled upon it. They have said, he, he did not die for me. He died for himself. Okay, now, according to my principle, he said, we shall meet when we get to Philippa. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So what are we talking about, my brethren? He said, if sinner entice thee, concern that no. In other words, the Bible is telling you and I, for as it is appointed unto man, wants to die. But after this is judgment. One day, you will eat your last food. You will sing your last song. You will wear your last dress. You will embark on that journey of no return. Just like the way people embark on that journey on last Friday. They went to that, that concert. They decked themselves with all kind of worldliness. With, all, with the best material that they had in their wardrobe. They spread that perfume. They, they, they painted their face and embark, and embark on the journey of no return. They never knew they would not be coming back. And what happened? They died in an ungodly place. I am not judging them. Only God knows where they are right now. Only God knows where they are. If they have known, 
if they have known Jesus in the very first place, they would have gone to that place. A lot of people have been, have been wasted like that before. People are still being wasted every day like that. Even as we are talking now, people are dying. My beloved brethren, the Lord is telling you and I this morning that sin brings death. Don't be carried away by the fantasies of life. Don't be carried away by the euphoria of life. In other words, put Jesus first in everything. Ask yourself this question. I'm about to take a decision now. Does this decision, please God, what is the Bible saying concerning this situation? I'm about to marry now. What is the Bible saying concerning this situation? Look at my life. Is the Bible, the, am I walking according to what the Word of God says? The Word of God is the compass for us to be able to live a peaceful life in this planet Earth. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. He said, but godliness with contentment is a great gain. Godliness with contentment is a great gain. First Timothy 6, 7 says, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we are carrying nothing out. What are we killing ourselves for? Why are we committing that sin? Just ask yourself that question. That thing that I want to make you lie now. Ask yourself that question. Does it worth it? Does it worth it compared to whom you are in the sight of God? Compared with, 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 with what you possess? Does it worth it? Why do you want to lie? What, is, what, what will make you to lie? Jesus Christ never lied. He stood for the truth. That is why he's called the light. He's the light. Anybody that lies is in darkness. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Bible makes us understand in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10. He said, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, I have come that thou might have life, that might, that might have it more abundantly. Jesus Christ has come to give you life. He has come to give me life. And he wants us to remain in that life. He has made you and I to understand. The devil has no good thing for you. When the devil promise you wet, he will take your soul. When the devil give you a cap, he will take your head. When the devil give you, when, if he gives you anything, you, you will pay times, times hundred of that thing that he has given you. Can't you see that the devil has nothing to offer? Can't you see that the devil is there to kill? He's the thing that we are coming about, we are talking about right now. That is why the Bible makes us understand in the book of 1 John chapter Chapter 3, verse 8, that we have read before. He said, the, 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 the he that commits sin is of the devil. The very moment you concord with that idea that the devil has given to you, which negate or go contrary against the word of God, my beloved brethren, you are of the devil at that particular time. Because you know why? He said, for the devil sin it right from the very beginning. In other words, man knew no sin. Man was perfect. Man was pure until the devil came and came to bring him down to a piece of nothing. Somebody who was who was who was who was a, 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 a living in his father's estate became a slave in his father's estate. I pray as many of us that the Lord Jesus Christ has redeemed, we will not entangle ourselves again in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Bible makes us understand they say, He that liveth in pleasure, she that liveth in pleasure, they are dead while they yet live. What are we talking about? Are you still dwelling in pleasure? The Bible is telling you right now, that way that you think is right in your eyes. The Bible is telling you is death. That is the end point. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 6. He said, but she or he that liveth in pleasure is dead Why she yet liveth. Can't you see? It's not the day that somebody died. That is the day he actually died. The day you went back on that journey of no return, that journey of your own way, of the lust of your heart. The Bible is telling you that you are finished. You are finished. Or except you are able to retrace your step by the grace of God, bow to Jesus Christ and cry for mercy and he will have mercy upon you. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. So brethren, what are we talking about? Sin brings death. He remains. Do you want to be holy? Do you, do you want to... Do you want to do you want to remain faithful in the vineyard? Stay holy. Stay righteous. Hold on to the word of God. Look upon unto Jesus Christ all the time. The author and the finisher of our faith. My beloved brethren, if you turn your Bible to the book of Romans, chapter, uh, Revelation chapter 21, Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, it says, But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderer, the homomonger, the, and the sorcerer, and the idolaters and all liars, no matter how you call it, commercial lie, 
sweet lie, romantic lie, no matter how you pen the lie. He says, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstones. I pray the Lord have mercy upon us. Burneth with fire, shall burneth with fire and brimstones, which what is the second death, my beloved brethren. I pray, as many of us, that the Lord has brought to the cave of Adullah, none of us will die the second death in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 What are we not saying now? Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. It says, stand fast therefore in the liberty where with Christ has made us free. Stand in that liberty right now. Stand in that holiness. Stand in that peace that he has given upon unto you. Stand in that grace that he has given upon unto you. Don't disgrace that grace. Stand in it right now. He says, stand fast therefore in the liberty where with Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What is that yoke of bondage? It has made you to know the light. He has brought you to the light now. He has told you the truth. Nothing but the truth. What do you need to do? You need to take action. How do you take action? You restitute. Restitute. That thing that you did when you were in darkness. Begin to restitute it now. Begin to amend your ways now. Stand for the truth. Let me tell you, my beloved brethren, Christ cannot fight for you when you are when you are still living in error. When you are still living in darkness. He's of the light. Except you come to the light, that is when he can fight for you. The Bible makes us to understand in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6. He said, having in readiness to revenge every disobedience. Having in readiness to revenge, revenge, uh, to revenge every disobedience when your own obedience is fulfilled. Are you telling that wish to die? You don't know that you yourself, you are a wish when you are still, when you are still living in iniquity. You remember what the Bible says, that the spirit of disobedience is that the spirit of, 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 of rebellion and witchcraft. Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? Go to the book of Psalm. You will see it there. Uh, sorry, the book of First Samuel. When, when God uh, 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 sent uh, uh, Saul on an errand, and Saul went and did his own. That is it, my beloved brethren. There is no way you can repent or you can fight and claim what belongs to you when you yourself are still living in sin. I pray the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. He says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I like using myself to give an example. I remember when I was growing up, when I go to the village those days, people would be saying, so they, they just came to press me down. I would be asking, how did they do it? They would be telling me, don't say it, oh. don't let them come and try you. I say, eh, hey, they'll come and press you down. How is it? I never knew. Since I was, I, I was curious to know how it was, I, 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 fall in, I, I fell into a relationship. I, I, I had an affair with a girl. I never knew that that girl was, he was, he was even having, he was so demonized to the extent that she was even having a, 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 a spiritual spouse in the river and she has a ring. She has a ring. My beloved brethren, the day I slept with that girl, that was the day, the day I slept with her, when I want to meet her before, we normally use a, a this thing to protect ourselves using this a, a condom. But the day I used my body to meet her like that, she manifested right in my eyes after the deal was done. She manifested. I like saying this thing to people so that people will learn lessons from it. What did I do? I went and fished from a troubled water. I went and invite problem. I was not, I've never been pressed before. When I now saw the way she, she manifested that day, for a couple of hours, it was only water I used to revive her. When I sprinkle water on her face, she would regain her consciousness. After that thing was done, immediately she got up from the bed. She was saying, my ring, my ring, give me my ring, my ring, my ring. Please don't block me, don't block me, don't block me, don't block me. I say, hey, power don't bust. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. So, brethren, what am I telling you? As she made a statement. If you break my heart, I will deal with you, not me. I will deal with you. It will deal with herself, not me. And could you believe? Right from that, right from that, I love the light, the relationship scattered. Even she even told me that if she sleeps, if she sees anything she wants to buy, if she sleeps, she will wake up and see money under her pillow. She told me I can make you rich. He said she can make me, she can. She can give me whatever I want. Say, but she's already seen it that I'm not ready to, I'm not ready, I'm not serious in this relationship anymore. That is what she opened. I'm, I'm telling you what she told me with her mouth. Bridget, 
after the relationship ended, she discovered that I was no longer interested in that relationship. What happened? My brother, my sister, except I don't close my heart. If I close my heart, they will press me from if it is if it is seven o'clock in the evening, I close my eye. They will press me from that time till the following morning. I don't close your eye. Anything that will make you close your eye, they will press you. They will press as I'm opening my eye. The first day they came, I run out of my room. I ran out. I said, hey, when they press me, I open, I ran out of the room. So my, my father was still alive. Then I ran into my father's father. I said, hey, they keep to press me. My father looked at the time. He said, that he, it's just nine o'clock. It's, it's not yet time for them to go to Kofu. <laughs> These people, they operate at any time. Each time they put their back on the ground, they, they, can, they, can, they can do project, they can go out of their body and do whatever they want to do. My beloved brother, what am I telling you this hour? Because I went to fish from a troubled water. I brought, I brought problem. That is how sin is. That's what the Lord is telling you and I this hour. Sin brings death. If I had kept myself the, the right time for me to marry, I would have had that problem. I had that problem because I went to feed from a troubled water. That is why the Lord is telling you now. He has delivered you now. He has washed you now. Don't go back again to, to, to Pastor T.B. Joshua. That is doing the more you look, the less you see. That is doing the abracadabra, the jamboree. Don't go there. That is why he's telling you now in this Galatians 5 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn your Bible to the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 11. Revelation, chapter 22, verse 11. I'm rounding up now. He said, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. Verse 12 says, Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according as his word shall be. I pray as many of us that the Lord has brought to his marvelous light. None of us will entangle ourselves again. We all shall receive the reward at the due time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brethren, the Lord has spoken to us again. That is the word of, of the Lord for you and for me. May the Lord bless his word in our heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, is righteous Jesus. Hallelujah. Sin brings death. Righteousness brings life. Amen. For yourself, and whatever you choose, it's what you get. That's right. God, I love the apostles this message so much. They are body of evidence. They use their own self to give you what you need. Before God called us, we were into what we call sin. We know what is sin, we know what is all. So, therefore, we have heard it, what sin brought to our brother. But thank God, righteousness have cancelled it from him. Whatever you yeah. are doing now, yeah. that decision you're about to make, be careful because that might be your death, that might be your death penalty now. Whatever you're about to do now that is sinful, it will sink you into hell. I pray to have mercy upon you, have mercy upon me, have mercy upon the preacher of this world, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. You are not born again. Please, come out. That place you are, the end of it, you will not like it. Come out and give your, le your life to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Say after me, if you want to. Lord Jesus, I've heard your word. I realize how dirty I am, how sinful I've been. Today I've heard your word. I've come to you this morning. Have mercy on me. Forgive me all my sin. Purely purge me. Purely purify me. Take my name away from the book of death and write it, O oh Lord, in the book of life. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. 
come into my life, come and dwell in me, and I born in me. I am born again today. All things have passed away, and all things have become new. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for sending your word my way. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for taking my name away from the book of death and pulling me out of hell. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.